welcome back to the next instalment of the Inside Truth. Should we have a warm-up reg layer? The inside of it. Why? Because I like cutting things apart and showing you how things work inside, and it's interesting. So this is the warm-up reg layer, 16 valve version, back in advance. Ignore that, that, and that. We'll come back to that shortly. So the inside here, we have our bimetallic strip. Now this is your warm-up element. We have a little pin there, sits in the disc, you can't see it at the moment, but you'll see it in better detail shortly. And that sits on a little tiny top hat with a fuel inlet port and a fuel outlet port covering those two holes. So let's mimic a base setup warm up pressure from cold. So as we see here, warm up cold pressure is 0.8 to 1 bar within reason. Obviously various cars differ. So we've got heating element here. Power is sent from the plug over the back there to that bar. Now that bar is fixed holding a certain pressure on the springs holding the pin at a set point. Now what you want the pin to do, the pin covers two holes which we'll see in a bit. Now the two holes let fuel through. So if it's blocked, as in completely closed, no fuel gets through which means you've got high control pressure. So it's right open as far as it can go where it's set here you've got a lot of fuel going through which means you've got a low control pressure which is what we want to cold so springs there preset heating element bar rises up relieving pressure off the springs which means the springs can have a counteracting force on the pin which then starts to cover the little hole inside this in turn gives us our rising rate in fuel pressure. So this is a close up, as you can see, of the business end of it. So just a little line there and there. Now that's our metal disc, which is very thin um, and very flexible. So we have this outer line. This outer line has no ring in it, which is just there. So I've cut it in half. So that's our ceiling area. So we've just got this section in here where the fuel comes and goes. We've got one orifice there going out and one directly underneath there. And the one under there is the same height as this part here, which means if you've got fuel full pressure on there, it will seal it off completely. So what are the adjustments doing? So this is all warmed up, all running engine. We have a preset setting on the threaded portion there. That links to these in there, two springs in an hour. So once the heat melon has warmed up, it's relieved all pressure of the springs, it's now taken out the system. So then we're set left with a preset distance. Pushing on that pin, allowing X amount of fuel to flow through, which in turn gives us our set control pressure of you no know, three and a half to four bar, depending on the car it's fit to. So what are the adjustments doing? Well, we adjust it by this threaded portion here, screwed anti-clockwise or clockwise. Now what you want to do is to lower control pressure when it's warm up. So that threaded portion goes up there and has an acting force on the springs which in turn puts pressure on the pin which again lets X amount of fuel through or not. So what you want to do is unscrew that anti-clockwise which relieves pressure off those springs which allows the fuel pin to move away from its orifice a touch which means more fuel can go through which means our control pressure lowers. Now we've got the diaphragm on the bottom. This is a 16 valve with our vacuum. So the center point is our vacuum. The vacuum chamber is inside here. That's our vacuum chamber. This in here is just a dormant space. Now, what's so important with the vacuum chamber? So on this particular type, we have a full load enrichment. So this diaphragm sits in the middle section of the warmer regular. Now what it does, it is connected to two springs. We have two springs in there, an inner one and an out one. This gap here is fully closed up when the car is in idle or part load conditions. Now that gap closes and pushes on the outer spring, which in turn pushes on the fuel pin, which in turn raises our control pressure or holds it at a set point. And once the throttle is opened, the vacuum is lost, which means the diaphragm drops down to its lower section, leaving a gap there, which then relieves pressure on the inner spring, relieves pressure on the pin, which lowers our control pressure, giving us 
full load enrichment. So that's how the inside works, how it moves up and down, how we adjust it, what the diaphragm does. So how does that refer to the control pin, which is our main governing force on uh, letting the fuel in? So we'll move back to our lovely cut apart meter and head from our first video. So remember, the control pressure from the warm up regulator comes through here into this top chamber and through that tiny little orifice pushes down on there and tries to push that piston down. But obviously we've put wide open throttle, so that's now right up there. It helpfully sticks for perfect demonstration. So that piston or fuel plunger is right up there and we've got a, another force pushing down on there. Now why do we want less force on there? Well the more pressure we've got on there, the more that pin is pushing the air flap down. We want the air flap up because we want air in and we want more fuel. So lowering the control pressure on sudden throttle opening reduces this pressure enough for the fuel pin to freely move up at a quicker rate than it would do normally. Meaning when you've floored it, the fuel pin can go up, the air's in and the fuel's in. Allows the engine to pick up and obviously when the engine stabilizes itself at a steady state like you've pulled on a dual carriage or you've accelerated, you're now set at 70 mile an hour. All the vacuum settles itself and we go back to normal control pressure. The warm up regulator modification is drilling a hole in the back of there. Now that gives us access to put an allen key in the back, which means we can adjust it. Which turns that threaded portion which we can see in there. Now as you look at that spring when I turn it, the inner spring, see it's turning. So that threaded portion governs how much tension is on the spring that sits inside there. So why is that important? Well as we've just learnt, that threaded portion is preset from the factory to give our set control pressure. Now we will ideally want to reduce that control pressure just a tiny amount, you're only talking about half a bar, which is all we really need just to allow the air flap to rise that bit quicker, which in turn will then allow more fuel to flow through. So as you can see, we're rotating the Allen key clockwise or anti-clockwise, however we need to turn it anti-clockwise to lower the pressure. So the spring, the main outer one, is sat resting because we warmed up. We're turning the Allen key anti-clockwise, which rotates the in inner side spring, which relieves pressure. So it takes tension away from it, allowing the fuel pin to move away, allowing more fuel to pass through, which in turn reduces our control pressure. So, now we've done the basics, what is this for? And what is this for? And why is our bolt up there? This also, just for information, is a breather. It's nothing. I have had instances where I've had cars come to me with running problems and the main vacuum pipe that deals with this is plugged onto there. So anyway, so this is an old school way of adjusting them. Old school means it should have stayed there because it is not reliable and it's very, very precise and very not reliable to the point you could set this up, tap the body and it will change the fuel pressure. Um, now I can see how it works, the reason behind it, but in the real world there is no need for it. Simple, advanced work on there is all we need. So this has been removed previously. All this is has been drilled in and tapped. That's a threaded nut with an Allen key in it and a little lock nut. So if I undo that lock nut, undo that, you can move this whole section up and down. Now, what does that do? Well, that changes the pressure on that, on that pin, which again, in turn, changes our control pressure. So instead of doing it that way, you can also do it this way. Again, not the best way to do it. And you can also, on this side, this is the normal pin that's in there. It's been drilled and tapped at the top with a nut and another nut. Again, another little thread of arm lock nut, which means I undo that and I can adjust that and move that up and down. So literally all that does is move it up and down. Now, why can I do that? 
that allows us to adjust our cold control pressure. Doesn't really make much difference because when you drop our warm-up regulator mod pressure down to say 3.5 bar, yes you are dropping a bit of pressure off the cold control pressure, but in the grand scheme of things, would you notice it? Not really. Um, these cars are getting the point, you don't really use them as a daily car, you want them as, as, as a, a hobby car, a play toy. So letting it warm up properly is what you would do instead of your new cars, now you jump in, start it up and off you go. So yes, I can see how that works, but again, you've got to remember this is bolt to an engine. The amount of vibrations that go through this, these work loose, this works loose, it means... It doesn't sit straight and it causes havoc with the pressures and we're only talking half a bar pressure difference between this being stock pressures being half not even that yeah say half a bar over just for constant so four bar running pressure this is now not working for some reason and you're getting four and a half bar control pressure that will cause the car to start shuddering and possibly misfiring and wanting to die itself down. Hopefully this has explained how this works and why it works, what the warm-up regulator modification actually does and we can see it, and has demonstrated another way that they can be modified, probably with the success, but in my opinion, dealing with these don't it's not really an option to me, it's it's too finicky so many vibrations it can just wheel wheel itself loose and you've got to put so much force to tighten that up to keep that not moving this is only aluminium and you've got a steel thread in there you're going to end up stripping the thread which is actually what's happened to this one up there that thread stripped in there so you can't do that tight enough because it doesn't sit tight in there simple as that anyway hope you like the video plenty more coming along i have to find what else i can cut apart and see the insides of Cheers for watching, see you again.